Just a quick update on news that's dropped in the last couple of weeks. AMD has acquired yet another AI software company. Silo.ai is a company that boasts that it has 150 or so PhDs and their whole thing is optimizing AI software. If one thing that people have been critical about AMD for is that the software stack needs work. And as a result, AMD has made a number of acquisitions to help bolster uh, their position. We've got Mipsology, we've got Nod.ai, and now the biggest is Silo.ai for around 660 million. Uh, it works out about just over $2 million per employee, which is a lot. And what Silo AI have been doing as a small company is helping other companies optimize their AI models. Um, what's really interesting to me is that they're based in Helsinki in Finland, or at least that's where their main office is. They've actually got a global presence. But they've been spending a lot of time on Lumi, the supercomputer. This is one of the top supercomputers currently running MI250X uh, GPUs. And they've been developing large language models uh, or optimizing models for their clients and for some of the open source stuff on Lumi. I asked AMD about this acquisition, about how Silo.ai have helped doing the optimization on the software side for Lumi, and they said there's been some interaction there for at least the scientists who use that hardware for machine learning work. And in the case of uh, you know this acquisition into, into AMD, it should finish by the end of the year, I think the press release said. And it means that they have another 330 or so employees bringing into the company to specifically deal with software optimization for AI. Uh, I've been speaking to a few developers recently about the state of Rockham, which is AMD software stack for their uh, Instinct GPUs for their AI accelerators. We saw the launch of Rockham 6 back in December 23 and 6.1 in sort of the mid of 24. Uh, the reactions have been positive. Uh, there's still work to go. Uh, we're in this situation where AMD wants to supply AI to the masses, um, but they also need to keep the key uh, customers on board. Uh, Lisa Su has said this year that they will have around four and a half billion dollars of revenue relating to their Instinct product line and their AI, uh, which is um, you know a factor more revenue per year than uh, I perhaps perhaps some of us were expecting, given that. Uh, Nvidia is just, uh, they just announced $28 billion in revenue or such last quarter. Four and a half for the year is kind of small in comparison, but it's a start. It's giving people an opportunity to provide op options in the AI space. Um, speaking with one of the big cloud providers, they turned around and said, if we go buy Nvidia GPUs today, the lead time is 52, 56 weeks, uh, and AMD is half that. Uh, AMD also recently just announced the MI325X. I've got a blog post over at more-more.com about that. That's the HBM3E version of the MI300X. So uh, same compute, but just faster memory and 288 gigabytes of memory. That should be coming out probably near the, near the end of the year. And that four and a half billion dollar amount of revenue will include the launch of that product and any revenue generated at the end of the year. Uh, AMD is now committed to more of a yearly cadence in its GP, in its uh, AI accelerators. So we've gone from MI300 to MI325X, and we'll have uh, MI350 uh, series, then the MI400 series, and the whole point is it's almost going back going to TikTok, right? Um, but instead, uh, what one direction is increased memory and faster memory. So in this case, it's HBM3 to HBM3E. And then the next generation is new chiplet design, new architecture. And then after that, we get more memory. And then after that, we get new chiplet, new architecture. Speaking with Samsung on this, the Samsung Foundry, they had their event a few weeks ago. Uh, they had their timelines for HBM3, HBM3E, HBM4, and HBM4 after that. Uh, which we assume is like HBM4E, and they were talking about how much capacity they expect these AI chips to have, um, not specifically AMR, uh, AMD's uh, AI chips, but just the high training chips that look like these uh, chips. So, you know, NVIDIA, uh, Intel, AMD, Sambanova, that sort of thing. Um, you know, and they're talking about having a terabyte of HBM4, HBM4E memory further down the line with 30 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth into the chips. So everybody's you know, got this roadmap of where the cadence needs to be. We just need to do the research to do that. That's on the silicon side. The whole point of this video is to talk about the software side and this silo.ai acquisition. Um, yeah, it's, I, I've put it to AMD that at their next event, 
what they need to do is they need to get a representative from each of their you know software acquisitions on stage and do like a mini panel about what it's been like to be acquired by AMD, what the integrations being like, uh, what they're doing, you know, if they're specifically working on the software stack or on customer optimizations or whether it's on training or inference, uh, because what most of these AI hardware startups that I focus on are doing is they're 60% software engineers. Most of NVIDIA is software engineers. At this point, I'm pretty sure most of AMD is software engineers now, you know, 60, 55, 60% at least. Uh, and, and when you're doing a large product line, when you have lots of products, you need to go and make sure that the AI is working for all of them. NVIDIA is lucky in the sense that they have almost like a unified AI architecture. You can write for one product and it works on any. Um, AMD and Intel, uh, and to a certain extent Qualcomm at least as well, they have multiple AI architectures. So writing once and working, having it work on anything is difficult, uh, which is you know just in. Uh, just increases the fragmentation of this industry which is really annoying um, but in order to combat that you need the software clout in order to do that uh, I think in terms of employee numbers you know Intel is at the sort of 130,000 level uh, AMD and Nvidia are around the 30,000 level somewhere between 27,000 and 30,000 um, companies have different times when they update their employee numbers I think Intel does it quarterly Nvidia and AMD do it yearly something like that uh, but the point is that there is more demand for AI software engineers than ever before. Uh, so that's why a startup like Silo.ai with its 150 PhDs or you know, whatever marketing you want to put to it can go and make themselves you know, a t a, an acquisition target for a company like AMD. Um, I've done uh, some coverage of uh, a company like Lamini, for example, who extensively use AM, AMD Instinct GPUs, despite having one of the inventors of NVIDIA's Tensor, um, Tensor Core on that team. And he said, well, we use AMD because we can get them and they work and they're efficient. That being said, that company just published a blog about working on NVIDIA. So uh, we'll see where that goes. But these companies that have the talent, that have the startup talent, are becoming acquisition targets for the, for the big guys. Uh, the question is just, you know the money right and that you can only do so many acquisitions if you're bringing in four and a half billion dollars of revenue a year or you know nvidia doing you know 28 billion in the last quarter god knows what it's going to be next quarter um we'll see they seem to be beating uh, market estimates every quarter for the last few uh but in terms of yeah software i think bringing rockham um i actually heard somebody mention that uh, extending rockham into consumer is still a target uh, I know George from Chips and Cheese uh, would love to hear that. I think the question is whether that's going to you know, be retroactively applied or just for future products. Yeah, we'll see. There's still a few months uh, in the year left um, before perhaps you know, next generation GPUs are spoken about. Who knows? Um, but if you love this content, please don't forget to, to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all, all the standard YouTube things. I have a newsletter for those of you who don't know. It's at more-more.com and the second more has two O's uh, for, for Gordon Moore because uh, my uh, consultancy company, More Than More, that's where I publish some of the more financial and business type stuff that really doesn't you know, fit well on video. Uh, yeah, but um, thank you all for watching and we'll see you on the next one.